Hello and welcome to Zoe Sews. I'm Zoe and today I'm going to be doing my sewing room tour. In this video I'm going to go through how I store my patterns, how I store my fabrics, I'm going to show you my yarn stash and how I store all my little sewing supplies and how I keep everything organised and tidy. I just want to say that I know a lot of people don't have a tidy sewing room, however I am a clean freak. I like things tidy, neat and in order, hence why my room is so obsessively tidy however my mum is staying in here while she's sick so it isn't at its tidiest I say that but people are probably walking here and say it's spotless so my mum is staying on the sofa um, it drops down to make a decently sized bed and she's using my chair as a sewing sewing table no no she's not she's using it as a bedside table I, apart from that though, everything is the exact same in the room because it was designed to be kind of a spare bedroom sewing room. Like I've actually already filmed the sewing room tour, so I'm going to hand you over to Zoe of the Past to show you how I keep everything organised and tidy in my sewing room. So this is where most of the magic happens. And I've got in here pretty much all of my sewing supplies and Betty, oh this is Letty actually um, because I have a new mannequin so this one is, this one is now Letty um, which I am going to do a proper review on later. Now up here we have some embroidery artwork, the centre one is by my Lana and the outer two are by me and that whole wall at some point is going to be full of embroidery hopefully. Okay, I have changed because I have already filmed all of this before, so that is why I'm wearing a different top now, I'm wearing my pyjama top. Uh, my hands were just way too straight, shaky, so I've broken out the tripod to show you better. I will zoom you in a bit So what's going on here. So back here we have all my sewing books. I have here the Berger book which is a beautiful, beautiful knitting book. I love some of the patterns in here. I'm trying to find some of my favourites. I love this little top that's in here. There's all sorts in here. It's a brilliant book. I've also got my, I'll move that out of the way. I've also got my great brush sewing bee books, my crochet book, all that kind of stuff. I have my little cactus, which has been named Frog, or my dad calls him Spike. And this is a little crocheted, I always forget this is an autofocus, uh, this is a crocheted little cover cosy that I just thought looked quite cute. I have a little pot here with my hand cream and my lip balm in, a small clock which is shaped like a vintage sewing machine, pen pot and a glass of rocks. Um, saying that sounds so strange. Uh, basically, these are rocks that my dad collected when he went. Okay, sorry for any crinkling that may happen, but this is my pattern drawer. This drawer back here that you can kind of see is just full of camera bits, so it's really not very fun or exciting. This is my pattern drawer, and in here I keep my commercial patterns that are in their folder, in their envelopes. I have, I've only got one indie pattern in here. Sorry, this must be so not loud. The Melly Lot shirt pattern in here. But I also keep in here my, I'm trying to find a nice one to show you, my vintage stash. Or should I, I should really say the retro stash, really. Um, I love this one. It's like this big oversized top with this kind of big flared full skirt which I definitely need to get round to sewing. Okay this is the main sewing drawer so just there is my pattern drawer and this is the main sewing drawer where I have most of my stuff. So back here we have zips because I'm lazy a lot of the zips that are cut out of garments and things are still attached to the set of garment. Back here we have buttons these are some beautiful, I will get them out of the packet actually. 
These are some absolutely beautiful mother of pearl buttons that I got off Recycled London or something like that. Their name is similar to that on Etsy, which I will try and link below. In fact, I'm going to leave these out so I remember to link it below. Back here, I have my bias tape. This is just a big wheel that I got off eBay, which I don't particularly like, because as you can see, you don't have a lot of seam allowance on that. Back here, I also have elastics and some bra making supplies. Um, trying to find them. I have this, this strap elastic there. Yeah, so I have all my bra making supplies, elastics, things like that trim, trimmings back there. Here is my pattern weights that my mum made for me. So she's made them in two different patterns. This I got, why did I get this? Got this off a market near me. Yeah, a local market. And this was off myfabrics.com. It was one of their end of line fabrics. And I made a dress out of both of these fabrics. Also have my tracing paper. And my interfacing. You know what interfacing looks like, I'm sure. I need some more of that though. Oh. I have a pencil sharpener which belongs over here. In here I keep my cottons and my overlocking threads. So because my mum makes curtains, we have a lot of some of the same colours. As you can see, we've got quite a few colours of this colour going on, quite a few navies. So that is where I keep most of my cotton. So in here is my basic sewing supplies. I have my measuring tapes, my calf kids and pin dish that my friend got me, which has all my pins in, my spare pins, my magnetic pin dish. This is my mum's pin cushion that she uses. And we also, through it, we keep the, our, our sewing needle. I say our because we use one until we lose it these back over here actually so it looks funny and it's a hedgehog and my mum made this um because well it's just so cute isn't it so then back here i have my sewing machine accessories bobbins needles taylor's chalk and the holy grail product that is the is it wonder tape magic tape something like that it's a uh show you it's like a double-sided um tape that sticks to fabric and comes out in the wash and you can sew through it without a gummy your needle it is wonderful stuff okay so i'm just going to push the drawer back a bit so you can see here properly i uh, over here i have all my large utensils and tools i would really like someone if they know to tell me what this is. Um, I believe it's for presses, but I'm not sure. There's like, you know, nothing that tells me the size that it requires, how to do it. We've for years been using it to puncture holes and things. So I'm not really sure what they are for. This, my Frisco's rotary cutter minus the blade. A ridiculous amount of scissors. A ridiculous amount of scissors. Who needs this many scissors? Look at all these scissors. It's ridiculous. How many times can I say ridiculous? Yeah, so I have all them. And I just want a little mini review during this. These are the Friskers. <sighs> really hard to open. These are the Friskers pinking shears and if you have bad hands, I would not recommend buying these. They are really, really painful. I actually have to sometimes get my mum to do the cutting with these because I just, I can't manage it. In this little pot, which is an old candle, I have all my smaller utensils. So things like a screwdriver that has a, a pin stuck to it. Uh, my screwdrivers in here. I have a mini, mini all million and one, uh, what are these called, unpickers, 
and these which i just want to talk about these just for a brief second these are a pair of embroidery scissors that were my nana's and they don't cut anything at all but they're just so beautiful i probably could get them sharpened but they're just so beautiful because the camera doesn't focus well i hope you can see that wish this camera focused so yeah they're just absolutely stunning so here here is my tailor's hand that my mum made for me for christmas um, which i think if you put eyes on at these darts and like embroidered teeth on here over the stitching line it'd look like a crocodile and down here i have my you cannot really see it i'll use my arm my curved ruler and my quarters ruler. Now, this drawer is a complete mess. It really is. Um, this is where we keep some of our yarn. And back here, we have embroidery stuff. And back here, it's kind of miscellaneous. So, how I store my yarn is I have a little bag here that I keep my mini skeins in and little leftovers that I just can't bear to part with. I keep in here single skeins. So here is, um, I'll show you the tag. This is Game of Crafts yarn. Game of Crafting yarn rather. Um, and this is, I'm covering up the pretty bit, is there Nudo Much colorway which is just stunning which really is and it's so squishy and lovely and uh, the rest, most of it is to be honest acrylic yarn because it's cheap um but i have actually vowed that i'm not gonna buy any more acrylic yarn um lovely contents only so back here i have my embroidery and this is my latest work in progress which i have not touched for a good few months now but going through it and seeing it again has definitely inspired me to give it another go i just I actually i look at it and i think oh god it is just so pretty um blowing my own trumpet much i know but i am just really really impressed with this is probably one of my best ever embroidery pieces that i've done um so i definitely need to pick that up and give it another go and in there I keep my other embroidery threads. Down here I have another embroidery hoop, a hammer, things like that. The little bits that don't really have home. Here is the fabric drawer. As you can see, I don't have much of a stash at the moment. And this is because I actually have to change out. I'm sitting, squishing my legs. Um, this is because I'm trying to get rid of my, not get rid of my stash completely, but I definitely want to... In fact, yeah, I want to get rid of my stash and I want to start buying things as I as I go. So, you know, I make a project, I'm doing a project, and then I have the next, say, like, project or two bought. Um, and this is because lovely patterns get released and then I think I have so much fabric. You know, I don't have any fabric for this. I should have bought fabric thinking more ahead I just buy fabric and I don't have a plan for it okay now these patterns don't actually live here um, I say patterns they are folders full of my sewing patterns my PDF printed ones or my they're not self drafted get an example for you um, all my self drafted patterns and so here's one of my self-drafted patterns. Um, when I say self-drafted, I kind of just mean I've copied them or I've modified a pattern heavily. Um, so that's what I keep in these three folders. And these actually live in the bookcase in my parents' room. Okay, and under the bed, I keep this. I'll just pull it this way. Under here is a what are they called hoover bags and in there is all of mine and mum's sweater quantities and 
of the yarn so this one is mine and so is this blue one but the rest are all mums now they are acrylic contented yarns and um, they're my last two sweater quantities of acrylic yarn that I have going freehand for this so I hope it's not too shaky but I'm in here which lives under the bed is my Frista and Rossman um, sewing threads which is just a glorious box to look at isn't it isn't it beautiful I'm actually so tempted to pack a few of these like this one and oh, this one I'm really tempted to pack a few of these in my bag when I go fabric dropping so I can try and match them up and get some really beautiful fabrics to go with my cotton which I know is strange but yeah I just love these so much which I'm going to try and link below you can see the tan line of where my watch sits um, I'm going to try and find these and link them below because they're really really brilliant everything in my sewing room my adjusto form my sewing machines I was thinking of possibly doing a complete review on my adjusto form once I've had a bit more of a play on it and if you would like to hear them then please let me know also if you'd like to know how I store my patterns and oh no I've shown you that how what patterns I've got and all of that kind of stuff that all my pdfs and uh, go through my uh, commercial patterns if you'd like me to do all that and please let me know below and I will next week I hope to have a in fact I have the pattern right here next week hopefully I will be doing a pattern review on the quick sew k4138 I don't know if this is a new release or not I think it might be McCall's posted it on their page and I just I fell in love with this option. So I'm going to make that and hopefully do a review on that next week for you. Have everything cut out and ready to go. That is what I'm going to do for the rest of today. So that together. And yeah, that is it for today. So I hope that you have enjoyed this sewing room tour. And please um, like, subscribe and comment down below what you would like to see, how you store things in your sewing room. I'm always up to hear it, up for hearing like new little ways that I can store things, probably store things better. And I'd also love to hear how how you have styled your sewing room to suit you. I've kept my sewing room really minimalistic and clean, and but I really want the bright, fun pop of orange, hence the orange yellow. Um, I've decided not to film anymore against my orange wall because every time I sit in front of that, I go pale white so unfortunately you don't get to see the glory of this orange wall but i just want it to be really fun and bright and clean at the same time because i like clean i like it being tidy yeah so i hope that you have enjoyed this i've already said that i've already said that i'm all over the place today i'm thinking i might need to start writing show notes may have already said that as well who knows anymore i'm losing the plot yeah so that is everything for today thank you for joining me i hope you've had a great time and i'll see you next week bye